Okay, we, we just gonna pause it right there. We don't need no chicks hiding in his bushes right now. We <laughs> <laughs> don't get it. Everything goes inside some building so, address. So what's your daughter's social security number again? <laughs> <laughs> it's tax season. I need that. Right. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Listen, I'm gonna do what you gotta do. I'm not even going down before that. I might give you autographs. You hide in the right bush. 
away from the house. <laughs> <laughs> away from the house. So you got like this this project that's out right now. Yes, the long awaited debut will actually be a year anniversary next month, actually. Next month, a month or two will be a year anniversary that the long awaited debut has been out. It's on SoundCloud, that piff, YouTube. That's actually my very first project. Very first project and it did well. Shout out to all friends and families that checked it out. I appreciate the support and even from people that didn't know me from like overseas, they was like, yo, dude, I love your music. It's so relatable. It's you know, it's different and you know, keep doing what you're doing and I I love all that positive feedback from mm -hmm. especially from people I don't know. The people that follow me on Instagram and on Twitter that give me that positive feedback, it, it, it's a blessing. It's a blessing, because I've been writing since I was in like junior high school. And what's crazy is I, the first rhyme that I spit was the G-Unit Beg for Mercy intro. Mm -hmm. It was Young Bucks verse, vacate your home, I'm here to break your bones. I spit it in the music class, because the music teacher was playing the piano. And they was looking at me in the class like, what the hell you know about rap? And then I, would, I, would, I was a big G-Unit fan back in the day, still am a big 50 Cent fan. And... I wrote my first rhyme in that class as well. Didn't really take it serious. Got to high school, really started writing. Five notebooks worth of just rhymes, mm -hmm. unrecorded. And I was like, okay, well, you know, it is what it is. I was still young at the time, 13, 14, 15, 16. When I got to college, I really took it serious. Like, yo, this is really what I wanted to do. You see that, y'all? Rappers, they do go to college. Yeah. <laughs> What's crazy about me is I actually have two degrees. Oh, wow. Wow. And what do you have your degrees in? Criminal justice. From, wow, he's a rapper. A game changer. A game How is that? Something, something a little different. And I, when I got to, uh, I went to Kingsborough College first. And I was sitting in the back of, the, of a math class. And this guy who's my friend now, Marlon, I said, he was like, yo, dude, I turned around one day because you said you were the best rapper. And he was like, I gave you this look because I was like, Negro, no, you're not the best rapper. I'm way better than you. And we kind of built a friendship and relationship off that competitive nature. Mm -hmm. And that's my mentor, like my, my best friend, my best friend from Flatbush. He's actually from Flatbush. So we kind of had that Flatbush link okay. automatically. And he taught me how to be a better rapper because he heard me rap. He's like, yo, you decent, but you need to switch this up. You need to do this. You need to do less of this. You need to incorporate this within your music. I'm showing you how to be a better artist, and I really thank him to this day. Like, that's that's my guy, man. Big facts. That's my dude. Okay. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been writing since high school, mm -hmm. and you had this project for like a year. Written since like 2014, I've started writing. Because I was always downloading beats. I was always writing to beats. And I said to myself, yo, you really need to, need to put out a project, man. Like, I was, so, I was saying to myself, like, you really need to do something. Yeah. You really need to stop. Yeah, because a, a lot of people, they just take it, like, as a hobby. So what right. made you decide to actually it, it, want it, to come out? Because every... That, that's a New York way. Everybody's mm -hmm. a rapper, everybody's an artist, right. and so on. So what makes you different than everybody else? Truth be told, it's a hobby for me as well. I I even say to this day, like, it's a, it's a lovely hobby. It keeps me out of trouble. It keeps my mind stimulated. It keeps me wondering. It keeps me exploring more. So it, I always told my friends, like, you know, I'm not really trying to get signed or nothing like that. This is a hobby. I love writing. I was always, you know, using my mind to explore myself explore the world and I thought you know music would be great you know everybody's rapping I said let me just you know take something into it now since I put out that project it's like now it's just like I can't stop I have another project coming out this year it's like now it's like we consistent consistent okay. moving 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 I just did a showcase for RCA records in um September that showcase went well mm -hmm. and that kind of made me want to do it more like oh you really moving up with this like you're really really moving like this isn't a hobby for you now nah, this is just a way of life right so now i'm taking it much more serious than i did seven six five years ago it's a blessing that's what's up mm -hmm. that's what's up so have you seen like <clears throat> the growth in your music from because there's a difference from when you know you're in school right and <laughs> you have time to focus on it mm -hmm. more you know 
big growth, big so, growth in how I use words. My language in music has definitely changed. I was always that gritty N word this, N word that. I, I don't even use N word in my lyrics. I, I tell people, you listen to a long way to debut. I did 15 tracks. N word is not used in none of those 15 songs. Wow. And, and I sit back and I say, I think that's what makes my music that much more credible the fact that I did not curse in my music. I didn't degrade women. I didn't go off the deep end of no kind of negativity. Mm. And I sit and listen to my mixtape every day. It's like, I still can't believe I did that. Mm. I still can't believe I put that kind of music out. And that's what I really love about it. My growth from when I was a teenager to now, how much I've learned, people continue to teach me as I walk the streets. Like, you know, do this, do this. Uh, implement this, implement this. Take this out. Mm. Try to incorporate this. And I love the long way to do. I, I swear to God, I even say it to myself, like, that sounds like an album. That doesn't even sound like a mixtape. It sounds like a legit album. And So what would you say is like your style compared to artists that are out right now? What My style? Uh, I'll be honest, I don't really like to compare myself to anybody. I like to stay in my own lane. But if I had to put myself next to this, like J. Cole, underground rap, like real lyrical, hardcore okay. rap. And that that's the way I've always embodied. So hip-hop. am I am, am I gonna find any trap music? No. You're a Brooklyn rapper, like I, <laughs> I, I, need, to, I need to know this. No, nah, I mean you know <laughs> I used to I used to shit on people that did trap music when I was coming up, like a couple years ago actually. But then I've grown to learn like people gonna make their own kind of music. Yeah. You can't hate on somebody for what they do just because you don't like it. Yeah. And a lot of people used to sit down and tell me, like, yo, bro, I understand yeah. that's what you do, that's what you don't like. But don't shit on the next man, because you never know, you might, that person might help you. That may not be your style of music, but you have to understand that this is what this person does, this is what you do. Y'all in two separate lanes, just respect the lane and keep it moving. And so, but you won't find no chat music. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might mess around one day and be like, yeah, see how it sounds, but not. Yeah, I like how you said that because, you know what I'm saying, some people don't understand that there's different types of music for right, everybody. Right. So just like with, like, the thing is for black people, a lot of black people think like, okay, every song got to be political. Right, right. Come on, like, <laughs> what about that wild and music? Right. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody goes to a party. Yeah, hand yeah, you got to yeah. have that party banger. Sure. Definitely got to have that. That's the stuff. So why don't you, I'm going to play your first song, right? Okay. Why don't you introduce your song, Winston Soldier? This what is what this song is about first? Actually, truth be told, it was just me wanting to be lyrical. Because I was always told from people that helped me with music, like, yo, your first song has to be the kicker. Mm -hmm. Your last song has to be the genocide. Like, you got to just kill everything. Mm -hmm. So I was sitting listening to the beat, and I was like, okay, we'll put words together, put flow together, put a word, put a hand in, go off the deep end, get lyrical with it. So there's really not a, a real meaning to the song, but I like how I went off with my ideas. Every line just came after each other. And I was like, yo, this is a dope song. Listen to it. And I was like, yo, that's the intro. So it's just real lyrical. You're going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the stuff, y'all. So here it is. Winter Soldier, y'all. Mm-hmm. By Reggie J. Yes, man. Termination. 
and racial justification. You thinking about a check shoot, I'm thinking gentrification. When it comes to spots, all I talk about is the two and one. Spit out heavy crack while the women spit out their chewing gum. Reggie, get you chewed up and spit out. Never been a trigger squeezer, homie, cut this shit out. Wipe the bullshit off your feet or you can get out. Rappers talk about they gripped up, but keep the clip out. <laughs> no, I love that joke. <laughs> Sounds good though, sounds good. Man. I put my heart into that song. Like I just went everywhere with it. 
No, no, real shit. That shit sound like like real authentic hip hop. Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I bump that. <laughs> well, welcome back, welcome back. You on live with Lola here at FLO Empire Radio. You know we talking shit in the back. But <laughs> <laughs> that was Ready J, Eight Flying High. That's what's up. You know that's a pretty lengthy song. You know all bars. You know what I mean? You don't do that no more. <laughs> nah, that shit sound official. Like I, you know. Yeah. I- it is. I give it a thumbs up. I give it a thumbs up. That's what's up. And now we back. You know what I'm saying? With our pop-up guest, special guest. And, you know, I'm going to let you do the introduction. You know what I mean? He already in his zone. Yeah, he in his zone. Yeah, that loud in the system. You're going to bring the mic closer to you. You know what I mean? Peace. <laughs> Once you tell everybody who you are. Yeah, that's it? Yeah. Peace, y'all. Young Dirty Bastard, son of ODB. Live in the flesh, and you know, I'm still alive, still kicking. Got babies on the way, got my fifth baby on the way. You know, it's, it's, it's good to be born on the planet when there's a lot of things going on, but we still stand it, you know what I'm saying? At the same that's, time. That's what it is. That's what's yeah. up. <laughs> Nigga, five babies, got it. <laughs> well, I mean, that's you the first. Busy, boy. <laughs> I mean, when, when, somebody, when somebody asks me who I am, I got, I got to tell you everything that I got. <laughs> yeah? Word. So you don't, you don't believe in pulling out at all, huh? <laughs> My mom told me to pull out for the next the next wife. <laughs> she in Canada, but you know, it, it's it's beautiful. She like look like a little you know off off brand Cam Dashi and shit. Oh, okay, she's so you, nice. Word. I put, right, you have them on the road, huh? Thank you. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, it's good to have you here. Welcome to La Lola. You know what I'm saying? Where it's always live. Bless y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you know, one thing I want to add you is, like, how do you live up to the name of a legend? You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure everybody compares you to who your father was. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So how do you continue that on? Well, the way you live up to something is you be you, first of all. Because you can't know something if you wasn't right beside it your whole your whole life you might have been in it floating in it if you know what i mean yeah i mean you came out and you went to mommy but living up to something is like walking your own your own dogs Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because it's your flesh and blood being passed on through babies and that's how my children gonna walk the same dogs Mm -hmm. it's like if a man is on a farm and your daddy a farmer i'm gonna be the cow farmer too that's the next move for me it's like if i was hitler or if the father was Hitler, guess who I'm going to be? I'm going to be the son of Hitler. Right. It's, it's like, you know, it's, it's just in a bloodline. That's all. That's what's up. Just a... flow with it. <laughs> so, it's going to be a lot of controversy, and they're always going to say, do this, do that. But the world gradually changes. And if you got to shift with it, it's like platonics. You know, right. You just got to catch it. It's either, it's either you miss it, like a baseball, or you, you grip it, and you get it. That's it. It's so crazy. Like, it's yes. so awesome to see, like, the next generation. You know what I'm saying? Because you got, like, Big Pun Son that's coming yeah, out right yeah. now. Big, son, Big Pun Son is, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah. you know, like, people hey. that we grew up hearing, and it's like to hear the kids, like, taking on. Kids are baby goats. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. who's, who's taking the mic? Who's taking the torch? And just like ready. Yeah, that made me feel old as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I'm saying? you know what I'm saying? It's like I, it's it's completely dope. I mean, because and what was crazy to me is like they're not taking it for granted. You know what I'm saying? Like the next generation, like they have those doors already open for them. Don't get me wrong, but they just fighting just as hard as these other rappers. That's the first time I heard that. I like it. <laughs> I appreciate that because yeah. nobody know what you're really doing day to day. Right. That's crazy. It's true. We yeah. look like just like y'all, baby. Yeah, because you also had like Russell Simmons' um, nephews mm. that's coming up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and they they working just they grew up in this big house, but they trying to get in the game just as hard. You know what I'm saying? They don't have it easy because everybody looks at them like, yo, look, nah, she, you go, you born with that silver spoon. House. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you want you want that silver spoon. Why should we look at you like you 
you know, why should we give it to you easy? Yeah, right. You know, you know, you know, you know, you feel it's like things are stacked up against you because you, you know, that people think like, oh, he just like that because who his pops is, and you got to, you know, as you said, you got to create your own lane and create your own, you know what I'm saying, energy, you know what I'm saying, so people, it's like you got to work a little harder than the average, because like Jaden Smith, people, you know, he gets some movies because of who his pops is, and then, you know, you like, you got to actually show greatness, right. you know what I'm saying, like you can't just, right, you can't, you can't be slacking, slacking. <laughs> you can't be, because <laughs> they, they see who your one is, and they're expecting, like, right. we want some bars, you know, I'm lucky, like, <laughs> things have changed from the, the days the Knights was running around with the swords, because if right. you're a king, he wasn't a rapper back then, <laughs> he was just a king, now, if you have to follow that, you have to walk against, you know, you have to walk with bishops and all types of pawns, and you get slayed, you get slayed, you know, blood right. is drawn, it's just a, you know, that's, the world is different right now, that's right. all I'm saying, it's not that serious, it's more like a Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, like, big joke. <laughs> <laughs> I left it there too. Actually. <laughs> yeah, like that. yeah. That's what's up. Celebrity death. So, match. like, why don't you tell everybody, like, what have you been doing? Mm. Like, what you've been up to? What projects you got going on? Projects? Well, we can talk about the hip hop uh, Universal Museum that's about to be built. Oh. And think about the Bronx. Okay. It's like right over, over the river, or it's going to be a, another location. And once they build that, they're going to, all the old hip hop heads, that founded this, they mm -hmm. came together and sat around the table. It was just you know, a table and shit. And they trying to put things together for the, the new births. Right. We need this. Because right now, we don't really got museums for us, you know. Right. Yeah. They stole all our artifacts. Yeah, we, we, we got the Rock and Roll, they got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. How right. come we can't have, you know what I'm saying, the hip hop, you know, right. you know situation. It's going, definitely so. time. So what they did was found, like, Chris Rivers, Dane the Dane son, and me and put us on a song together because you know we we the uh the offspring of what's going on right now <laughs> right everybody's the offspring you know mm -hmm. the, the planet is like one cell you know mechanism so anyways we won we we got the babies and we're gonna they're gonna put us in like a uh well, whoever popping right now that's where they're gonna put us and and it's lyrically time to come back or just time to teach because okay. what's going on I like we I was talking about it before. There's nothing wrong with trap music. I got I make trap music. I make rap music. I make all type of music. But it comes a point where you have to learn how to control you. Because okay. when you listen to that music, you could kill yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you can take yourself too far. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's <laughs> true. I, I watch myself change listening to my song within okay. seconds. Right. You know, certain ways. Because New York rappers be known for having bars. Yes. So, you know, of course you have, like, these trap beats that are coming out right now. So I feel like New York rappers, we need to do it in our own way. And this is the wave that's going on right now. Let's, we can ride the wave, but we're going to put bars on top of that. We ain't going to be no skirt skirt and make a whole bunch of noise. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we and, and matter of fact, and, and ODB laid the foundation for Young Thug. When he, you know what I'm saying, he used to wild out with the crazy ad libs and the, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, because now, you know, when you think about it, you know, because Young Thug ain't really, like, he's saying bars, but he's saying it in another language, like the space language or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, but. I just, I, I respect everybody's, you know, authentic, uh, whatever they're trying to do. But right. I just don't, I don't believe if you got an agenda and it's against the manhood to go to bring it to me. Like, yeah. Don't right. bring it to my babies. I just yeah. want them to follow the girl. You know, I don't want them to chase any other yeah. girl yeah. tell out there. But a right. girl. That's all. Then I'm cool with you. Yeah, I can tell you be building a lot, bro, girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's, you know, shout out to all the guards and earths out there. I noticed yeah. that the nation of guards and earths, like, I, at one time, the, the pinnacle of it was when, um, like, you know, when the Rakim era down to the Wu-Tang yeah. era, and then after that, it kind of fizzled. And it's like, instead of seeking knowledge, everybody, you know what I'm saying, is, is promoting stupidity. Like, you know what I'm saying, lean and and Molly and, you know what I'm saying, right. like, you got black kids had, had doing like the, hard like, drugs now. Like, yeah, we had like the gangster rap come out after that, like the 50 Cent, then the conscious rap was. But even and 50 Cent like, wasn't like, yo, take some Molly, like, now it's just like, <laughs> pop a Molly. Do some lean. Like, I got that, I got that dirty water. Like, what, nigga? Like, <laughs> what, what 50 did for, for me and you, it made us hard. 
You know, it yeah. gave us a lot of heart. It didn't make me kill nobody for no reason. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now niggas is smoking K2 and bugging the fuck out like they jump over rooftops and, you know what I'm saying, trying to turn into zombies, keep biting people and all that. Remember when that bath sauce came out? Niggas was yeah, eating people? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> niggas was eating people, my nigga. Niggas was eating people. Like, are, do you, can you, like, really think, like, think about that. Like, what makes you eat another nigga? Like, <laughs> pause. Like, god damn. You know what I'm saying? So, like, this era is crazy. This generation is Oh, that's just crazy. crazy. You know, that's in the food. That's in McDonald's and Burger King. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, you go too deep, man. You go over there, because that's when you go to Monsanto. To the bioengineering, like, I, you know, we, we can build another <laughs> But keep it on, on ground level, Lord. Don't fuck too high, Lord. <laughs> That's what's up. So I know one of your greatest inspirations would be your father, right? Yeah. But you're in a new era now. So what do you say will be your inspiration going forward other than your father? Well... He's a white man. His name is Elon Musk. Okay. Only because he built certain things that I didn't yet. And okay. that's like the Tulsa car. He got money from the stimulus plan, which I don't know how he did that. I thought we was <laughs> fucked up. I thought we needed money for health care. But he got, they got money to build electric cars okay. when we needed money. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I vouch for that man. How he did, that's like a hustle move. Like he wanted to get a fly car while everybody need money. And sell a million of them. Mm. Mm. I mean, uh, and that's, that, that. I mean, don't. I mean, at the end of the day, the government. Are we supposed to be talking about this stuff? Are we talking yeah, about yeah. You know, I'm talking about We can say what we want, Lord. No, 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 no. We can say what we want, Lord. It's just, when you see that man in the suit following you, <laughs> <laughs> remember Oz Wide Shut with Duke, uh, was with the by the newspaper and those five time drones, nigga, like. You know, at, yeah, at the end of the day, though, like, here's the thing. For the amount of money that the U.S. spent on war, yeah. they could have gave every single American citizen $2 million. Yeah. Every American yeah. on, in America, $2 million. Mm -hmm. It would have eliminated poverty. But you know what, though? Inflation would have been stupid. Gallon of gas would have been, like, $20 a gallon. Like, you know, <laughs> if anybody got millions, you know what I'm saying? Right. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, though. Like, it, that's, how, that's how crazy the U.S. is. they rather blow niggas up than to take care mm -hmm. of their own. Yeah, that I gotta be honest, that's the only thing that I agree with Trump is that we gotta take care of our own before mm. we take care of everybody. Uh, yeah, because the US been playing, you know, yeah. That's the only thing. Everything else is up well, to Trump, me. Trump it's, figured it out already. <laughs> Meaning our own mean everybody already came to Zion. Every nationality is already here. If you take care of America, yeah. they all gonna follow anyways. Right. He already know that. So that they should have been doing that. <laughs> they yeah. just the agenda just figured it out, that's all. Right. Yeah, now the thing is the US strategically they gave they they help our other countries strategically right. for, for multiple reasons. One is if you help a country, um then their people won't be so fucking starving that they wanna come over here. For one, two is that then you got them in pocket because you gave them money, but now they they owe you favors, so you can pay, put your bases there, whatever, and so on and so forth. And also for the fact that you know it, they they basically try to it's like bribing the world into liking them. You know what I'm saying? Right. To, you know, the U.S. is known for being the hustlers of all time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how this country was built. Just hustlers. You know what I'm saying? This, this country was founded on, on evil. I mean, exactly. it, it was founded on evil and grimy and shit. You know, the, the, the whole blankets with the fucking diseases in it killed off entire civilization of people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's only like, when's the last time you saw two Native Americans walking down the street? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, I mean, but I mean, actual purebred, with like that's like un like concentrated <laughs> purebred. Like you got to go to North Dakota for yeah, shit like We that. used to yeah. own Manhattan. My, we Cuffy and you know Cuffy Indians, and it's in there's some some libraries were out there, and we sold it to him just for a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now he got it, and he act like we can't share it the right way. Mm. Mm. He's still mad at us because we gave it to him for free. <laughs> he rather us sell it to him for a higher price. Mm. He, he don't, that's why he look at us on a lower level because we we don't we humble us. We too humble for him. 
He yeah. trying to meditate like us in his heart. No, 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 facts. You're right. They don't. They can't reach. They, they chakras. Like you going deep, Lord. Again, like I understand. <laughs> it's like, yeah. but you know, what I'm saying you know, they can't. If that, that goes back to the melanin. That goes back to the fact that you know, what I'm saying mm-hmm. they can't reach a certain plateau. You know, what I'm saying in the level of, right. of elevation. But you know, I don't want no black suits following me, so I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alex Jones, Alex Jones is called Infowars, and he's had Farrakhan on it the other day, and I've never seen nothing like that. Because mm. you know, Alex Jones got a whole nother fan base. They had the Caucasian fan base. So Farrakhan came on, and it was like they reached the black and the white fan base at one time, so they were like shaking heads. So that's what we doing. Okay. You know, at yeah. the same time. No one is that's that scared stuff is over because Donald Trump not scared to say what he's saying. Mm. That means if he gonna say he allowing us and he hiring other people like Kanye and mm. Kanye talk. Mm. He got a big mouth. Who else talk? Uh, Steve, Steve Harvey. Harvey talks. <laughs> it, it's we can do what we want now. It's just yo, you gotta take it. I think a black lady just as they said she about the she already got ABC or something like that. A black lady. But what's crazy to me, and I've always bring this up, is that how hip hop has an influence of what happens in the White House. Like how crazy is that? Like even I brought this up before. Like when Obama was in office, yeah, he had Jay Z in the yeah, White House. Uh, yeah. That's insane to me yeah. because hip hop has such an influence in our culture that we're in the White House. You know what I'm saying? Where something that we would never yeah, be invited. Yeah, the thing is, is hip hop's reach is undeniable. And once now we we in an era now where you got middle aged white men who grew up on hip hop, right? That work in offices and office <laughs> buildings like Wall Street, bowler haired white dudes. You know what I'm saying? And these dudes, yo, yeah, you know, I grew up fucking trying to quest and shit like that. Like, and I'm like, oh, wow, like, you know what I'm saying? So that it, it, that that changes because those, those jewels that they was dropping in the songs back then, and you know, you heard those songs over and over and over again throughout right. your lifespan. It's like subliminal programming. So you know it kind of subliminally, you know, gave them some 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 type of uh, how can I put it like platform. It, it, it kind of enlightened them a little bit, mm-hmm. like or you know what I'm saying exposed them or, or you know like alleviate a little bit of the hate that was in, that that was taught from their fathers or whatever the hate the certain kind of right. people and you know what I'm saying so you know it, it, it's deep like now it's, it's a different way like these senators and government officials is like they all a lot of them grew up on hip hop like. That's why I think like conscious rappers are such and lyrical rappers are such a, a great influence. Mm-hmm. Like you got the J. Cole now. Mm-hmm. You got um Kendrick. Yeah, Kendrick Chance right rapper. now. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It's like it's a, we need those type of rappers. Mm-hmm. So back in the day we had those. Yeah, I mean, you know, we had so many of those. It like, was up to like 2003, 2004. Remember yeah. like when uh, 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 Tyler Quilly and Most Def and all that was popping, right. and, and you had, you know, you Common even was had, popping like, in the like, early yeah. 90s, like Digable Planets. You had all them back then. Yeah. Back. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't just party music all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, and it gave such a great influence. You know, I mean, I don't know how Jay Z ended up in the White House. Because uh, he wasn't much of a conscious rapper, but like I said, to have like such a great influence, hip hop says such a great influence, and every day to end. The, well, Jay Z, I think he ended up in the White House because he's so rich, and he became corporate and became accepted <laughs> right. in the corporate world. And once he accepted in the corporate world, it's like a whole different lane. So you know, he started. We you know, he started wearing the suits. Once he started wearing the suits, it's like I. Right, you know, it's a different thing, but he, he's a genius. I'm like, as far as business-wise, you know, I'm sorry, he's but a genius, except the, for that title move. The White House is, is right there. Right. Anybody could get there. But, it's people that live around the corner from the White House. Yeah, there's a lot of crime that happens around the White yeah, House. I, I, they're I see, not letting I see you it. in. It, it's, no, they're not letting us <laughs> in because we're not walking in. It's straight up. I walked through them doors like it was, it was water. Mm-hmm. So... If you don't want to go through the White House, then you won't ever go. But if you want to open your door that you built, you got to go through it. Because you know who built the White House. Yeah, it was a black man that designed the White House. And he designed the entire D.C., Benjamin Banneker. Um, He also designed it to be aligned with the Stars Constellations Mm -hmm. to where, you know, uh, Sirius is aligned with, you know, the, the, where these, where the White House uh, right. uh, the door of the White House is mm-hmm. on um, Christmas Day, I think it is, or something like that. 
Like it's it's deep how they like and he was a super master mason like dude was and he was black and it was the seventeen hundreds or something like that. It was like the sixteen seventeen hundreds. Yeah, yeah, but that was crazy. It, it, that's what I'm saying. We came to an era where we were allowed to build these things. We were allowed to build these inventions and houses and all these different things, but we weren't allowed to claim them. You know yeah, they, they never like, gave us right. They never like, gave us credit for credit it. for it. They never gave people yeah people color credit for it at all. And and it's 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 foul. Like, did you know that the person who liberated Mexico from Spain was a black man? And it was um uh uh, uh Henry Louis Gates has a documentary called Blacks in Latin America and the the, the the true history of Latin America and how he said that in any Latino tree, if you shake it, there's gonna be a black grandmother in there somewhere. Yeah. And like you know, it was deep. Like you know, the, the dude who for the first liberated city in Mexico came from a black man rising up and 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 fighting off the Spaniards and shit. And he got a statue for him, him and a machete. Like you know, what I'm saying it's, it's deep. Like watch that documentary. Henry Louis Gates is on YouTube and, and it's dope. And about credit, one thing I gotta say: mm -hmm. the sun don't shine on the earth to get credit. He just shines on it because that's his responsibility. Okay. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. So, but yeah, Boy. like, all right, we 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 going deep. I know the blast is gonna be out downstairs. There's gonna be a black car. We want the Fed office around the corner from here, literally. The oh, y'all saw them. They was quiet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, we got some assholes talking on the radio right now. They're talking uh some you know uh, some ancient mysteries. You know, all right, you know what I'm saying, but yeah. Uh, you know, like, nah, the, the guard came down and shared some real serious jewels and whatnot. I could tell that you be building hard, like, you know what I'm saying? And that's what's up, Lord. Um, I'm building hard now. I, I need to actually eat better. Word. Yeah, you got to you gotta take care of your physical. I, I shouldn't be talking because I'm, I'm, I'm a beast right now physically right now. <laughs> like, but, you know, but yeah, like, um, but, you know, like I said, the Lord, I could tell he's very intelligent, you know, bright brother. Um, yes, he sir. goes, you got to learn what to, like, go to ground level for, you know what I'm saying? For, <laughs> <laughs> you got to know when to go to ground yeah, level. I know, I know, but I was raised by, like, Farrakhan and them, and I had a dream, I think it was 2012, it was on New Year's, when it turned New Year's. I okay. told Mommy, Elijah Muhammad was in there, he was walking down a block with mad people. And I was like, Mommy, why is this mean? What does this mean? It said, it means what you want it to mean. I said, okay, messenger. That was it. Wow. Mm -hmm. That was it. And I, I don't think Moses and Jesus was, they was holding back. Because they knew they was here when they came, they came. When it was time to rain, you will rain. Even it's 40 days or 40 nights. I ain't know. Just... <laughs> <laughs> He's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going. He's going. Yeah. He's going. Yeah. The, you know, the Lord, the Lord about to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, like, I understand, but I know y'all like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he, he, he's talking about, like, yeah, you I, break it down to something different, but, you know, I know what he, what he means, but, you know, it's like the common folk that's listening right now, they, you know, right now they, they worry about... One thing I did know that we is only 10,000 years from the conscious level. Like, he was talking about serious. Yes. And it's, it's not that far, so every man wants to learn right now. So he's not that mad at us. So, yeah, true. So when you teach him, make sure you bless his brain, too. So he won't. He only gonna pull up to shake your hand. Like right now, we in we in the age of uh, Aquarius, yes. which is the water bearer, and we are about to enter the age of Pisces. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, like it, it's you know, but that that goes to a whole another thing. Like every x amount of thousands of years, we go in a cycle, and and we have different ages, and the religions different different deities. Um, symbolize the, the coming of a different uh, age. So, for example, Moses, that he blew into a horn. They say they blew into a ram's horn or whatever. And the ram is symbolizing of uh, the the Capricorn. I mean, uh, the, the 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 goat's horn or what have you for Capricorn. Um, no, no, my bad for Aries. I'm sorry for Aries. And Aries. like, yes, facts. And then there's the, the the age of Jesus. If you know, it's the symbol for Jesus, two fish. Which okay. is Pisces. Pisces. Right. And now, we, we, my bad, we're in the age of Pisces, we're entering the age of Aquarius, so which is the area, the age of right. the water bearer. So, you know, now if you talk, you think about it, you talk about, um, you know, the, the, the pull ice cap melting, whatever, whatever, the water rising, water bearer, you know what I'm saying, which is right. the symbol for. So, you know, it's, it's, it's deep, it's deep. 
some some next level shit. But anyway, it's like <laughs> we'll, we'll take like we got a, we got another show for that. <laughs> we got another show for that. So not to change the subject, we recently just had the Grammys, right? Wait, now, uh, how do what, how do you guys feel about mainstream versus independent artists when we had like Chance the Rapper, who is able? Um, yeah, to- I didn't like the fact that he sat there and had a whole bunch of you know what I'm saying, like Kirk Franklin, like really nigga, like <laughs> like really nigga, like. Fuck, I, I, like, I'm gonna I'm put him on blast. Fuck that shit. Yo, Chance the Rapper, like, I appreciate your music, your talented dude, but this nigga, like, Kirk Franklin, nigga? This nigga, like, he, like, this nigga's a fraud. Like, what the right. fuck is you got? Yeah. A fraud ass nigga, as you're fucking, like, to cheerlead your fucking music, and you talk about you don't want no problems with me or I'll kill you on your record, and you got quiet in the background, nigga? Like, you bugging. Like, Lord, like, yo, you bugging. You bugging. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with, you know, with, with independent artists and mainstream artists, it's hard for independent artists to, like, really, really get on. That's right. why, truth be told, a lot of people bash me for this, but I respect Bobby Schmurter. I respect Roddy Rebel. I respect Young and May because they see it as, okay, we're doing this by ourselves. We don't need a label. We doing, and that's what my best friend always told me, like, yo, if you got a camera, you got an idea, you got the people behind you, what you need a label for? Go out and do your own shit. Go shoot your own music videos. Go to the studio, record your own songs. Own your own shit. You get under the label, man. You gonna be somebody's puppet. Somebody's like yo, Reggie. You gonna right. be somebody's bitch. You you're, you're, you're at the mercy of cor- corporate America. Right. And then here's the thing: Nick Cannon was just fired, or he quit yeah. from um, America's Got Talent mm-hmm. because right. they was upset over a joke he made on stage that had nothing to do with America's Got Talent or whatever, whatever. But you know what I'm saying? Like they're all oh, they, they they sell them over. Oh, well, he can't be saying jokes like that. What up, what up? So he said, fuck y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? What did he say? I don't know what it, what joke really, it was exactly. Really, really but, quick. you know, they said that, that oh, like, you know, they can't do business with people with, with you know, people who... That um, kind of sense of humor? Nothing with that kind of sense of humor that, that you know, um, they have standards uh, for people's behavior in public. It's just like when you sign a contract for a football team or a baseball team, you can't, like, if you sign with the Yankees, you can't grow a beard or a mustache. Right. Because that's against their oh, policy. Oh, I see what you're right. trying to say. Like it's stupid. Like it's, it's you can't be you. You can't be you. Basically, if you're a basketball player, they tell you, you can't dress a certain Trust way. Trust me, you can't I know what that is. Thing. I've been in the corporate world. Yeah, for like so it's like years. ridiculous. So it's like yeah. you're selling your soul. That's what they say. You're selling yeah. your soul because you're selling yourself. Like you no longer could be you who you are. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You no longer could be you. But I mean, at the, at the point, that, you know, bottom line is though, you don't even belong to yourself. How this is how I can prove to you that you don't belong to yourself. Say that you're gonna kill yourself, mm-hmm. and they won't. They won't allow you to kill yourself, but they'll kill you. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. You lose all your rights if you say you're gonna kill yourself. They will tie your ass up, throw you in a rubber room. They'll beat you, mm-hmm. drag you, whatever, to prevent you from killing yourself. Why is that? You because you don't belong to yourself. Yeah, you stop in commerce. You stop in commerce. <laughs> when you're born, there's 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 an actual. Uh, a, a birth certificate is the equivalent mm-hmm. of arrival papers for mer- in, in mer- maritime merchant law, where you know a product arrives from another country, then and there's um, there's a certificate of of, of uh, I forgot the exact name of it, but that's the this, the birth certificate and that certificate are exactly the same thing. Right. They look in the same format, the same style, everything. It's um, and then your birth certificate and social security is connected. If you look at yeah. the <laughs> The red numbers on the back of your birth certificate and your social, they're connected. And that number is actually sold on the stock market. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and then there's, um, there's an escrow yeah, of $60 million dollars for every person or something like that mm-hmm. because you're part of the GDP and you're part, like, they place bets on the stock market on based on the population. So mm-hmm. for each person that's born, et cetera, et cetera. That's Should why they be. tell you that's why they tell you to make sure you have a good credit score. It has nothing to do with like what your you personal can, shit. Can you uh, it's gotta do <laughs> it with gotta the bigger do picture. It's the bigger picture. That's why they won't rent yeah. the apartment to you unless you have a good credit score. Mm-hmm. They won't do you can't do nothing without a good credit score now. Like you can't function in society without a good credit score. Right. The shit is is some real next level shit. Yeah. And and I mean like we, we you know, the God just just planted the seed, you know, for us to get going to a different lane. 
<laughs> and we went into a different lane, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, and, and, you know, before we were joking around on some buffoonery shit, but that shit works, and that's, you know what I'm saying? Right. That's what gives people, you know, tuned in. But, you know, sometimes it's times for, you know, deep conversation like these, and there's probably somebody right now listening that's learning. See, and, and, the thing and, is, the reason why I brought up, you know, the independent artists or whatever, because with independent artists, I have a greater respect for the independent artists because they're pretty much taking what they have in their pocket yeah. or people that are and around them and investing it in themselves, in themselves the to make their dream come to life, right? Not only that, when you go to a major label, you're pretty much signing a contract stating that you're taking out a loan. Yeah. No, that's not your money. That's not <laughs> your not money. It's you not your money. You gotta, gotta pay back or whatever. And it literally takes you going like diamond, like how Nelly went diamond mm-hmm. and so on in order to see a return. In, a real return. A real yeah. return. Like, uh, um, for example, in the 1990s, you know, people signed and they, they signed and they signed for the music. Now they got these 360 deals where you're signing everything. So even right. if you bought your own T-shirts to sell, you still got to give the label PC over right. that. And they get wind of that behind, you know. That's why you got artists now having niggas, like, seem like they bootleggers selling you t- merchandise. And, like, if it was, and, and so that way the label won't get wind or whatever. So you just claim that somebody was selling merch- mm-hmm. merchandise. It's, but it's really it's your crazy. merchandise. So that you ain't got to pay the label. It's really crazy, but... You know, that, and that's everybody dreaming, like, you know, I want to sign a major label. Like, they, because they envision the lights, camera, action, because right, yeah. you got yeah, a machine the behind you, and, and, and you got, you know, the name get bigger. I, this is what I recommend to any artist, like, I, um, first of all, now labels don't invest into getting you big anymore, so you have to already come in big. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they sign people that are already big, already There's got no a hit. Yeah. So you got to score a hit uh-huh. first for a big label to even acknowledge mm-hmm. you. Up, right. So then now... Um, you know, I, all I would say is, you know, sign a deal for one, you know, for one album with a major just to get the exposure way up. And then once, if you've solidified yourself and, and as a consistent artist where you've made multiple hits, then, you know, since you only signed for one album, after that you're free agent again and now you can reap all the benefits of, uh, uh, of the exposure that you got for the major label. You know what I'm saying? That's a good idea. Now, you being idea. as a DJ, right? Mm-hmm. With the demand, do you see that there's a lot of demand for a lot of independent artists or mainstream? As far as like musically, I yeah. mean, as far as their parties and stuff like that. Yeah, right? but just like overall. Overall, um, it depends. It's just all based on whether it's hot or not. So if it's like, so it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. People don't care about the label anymore. Nobody looks like what label is he on. I remember because. Well, it was once upon a time in the late 90s, and yeah. unless he was cash money, or unless he was with Bad Boy, or unless he was with, you know, certain labels, you, you, nobody was even checking for you. Now it's different. Now it's all about does your music stand out, and if, if it becomes, a, if it generates steam, and, you know, if it becomes a hit, then, you know, it doesn't matter who, what label you're on. Right. You know what I'm saying? And for, it depends on where you want to go as an artist. You want to stay pure, or if you want to, you know what I'm saying, you know, mm-hmm. Sell your soul a little bit, then so be it. I mean, selling your soul sounds bad, but you know, if you want to go that different lane or whatever, because you, have, you have no control, you really have. You don't have no control. Have no I mean, control. you have minimal yeah. say so when you sign that contract. How many artists that got signed and they were put on the show? Mm, thousands, like <laughs> Fifty Cent was put on like, the show. Yeah. Yeah, I used to work at Track Masters when Fifty Cent was signed in. It was Nature, it was Nas. I helped promote the Nas I Am album and so on and so forth. So, anyways. 50 Cent album had it had steam off of that How to Ride record, and because you know he got shot, that shit you know what I'm saying they shoved right. it, like it got shoved, mm-hmm. and and then now they regret it like damn we should have kept this nigga like you know what I'm saying but you know it is what it is like a lot of records got shoved, a lot of a lot of artists so just because you sound a label a major doesn't even mean you can come out. Mm-hmm. This there's artists that have a hit sign with a major. And right. the labels still don't put them out. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. Like, you had shows like American Idol, right? The first American Idol, Kelly Parson, mm-hmm. right? She had so much drama uh, when she first uh, was going to release that album because they had so much control yeah. of what she wanted to do. That's why, like, 
uh, years down the road, like you never see her like reappear. Yeah, because she, she, she knows because she's like you know what, like this she, is crazy. She, she lost, she lost faith in, in in it. Like you know, right. the thing is, since when music get done with creativity, if a person your your mood and how you feel about it affects of how you're gonna perform and how how you know how much uh, 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 heart and soul you will have into the music that you that you make. I remember like the first, I think it was the first or second season. One of the girls. She she was a country singer and she had like really long hair. They were so upset because one of the stylists cut her hair to like shoulder length. And they were pissed off to the point where it looked like they were gonna fire the stylist. And I'm like, wow, she hasn't even signed the contract yet. You know, and they have so much control even as to how this girl cuts her hair. Yeah, it's real. Like, so it's like, <laughs> especially for R and B, especially like at least rappers, they allow them to write their own music. Right. But for some R and B artists or, or artists that just pop, whatever, they bring a team in. I right, this is your writer, this is your st- choreographer, this is your, you know, so on and so yeah. forth, and then you just follow the instructions and that's it. Like you have no say so, you can't change a word on the record, nothing like it's just. It's <laughs> not anymore. So, but yeah, so. You already know what it is. Oh, happy side chick day, everybody. <laughs> we love That's the thoughts. We love the side chicks. Side, shout out to all the habitual side chicks out there. We love you. You know what I'm saying? He a mess. He love his side chicks. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. If he, if he brought you a bag of weed and a beer, don't worry about it, love. It'll be a better day, all right? So, we're <laughs> just struggling right now. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I got I got two rappers here. You know what I mean? I want to hear some freestyles. Can I get some freestyles tonight? Oh man! All right. And I'm you know, got, since I got young OG you in the building, it's only it's only fair that I put on the cream instrumental. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. Can can we do that? Let's do it. Cause I got that. Let's do it. Say, <laughs> so, hey, come on. Let me get it. Mind. Gotta do this for Brooklyn. I say, Illmatic, still at it, core static when I smack shit, attack shit for rappers who be spitting all that whack shit. Claiming that you shooting and poking, I leave you open, you hoping. Send shots and have the gun still smoking, you know it. Got your cool shook and I ain't even spit yet. Baby ass rappers, get you fed like a wick check. Beat this, cruising through flat, but showing the B6, the B6. Ranger boy, the devil with the 3 6 a beast. A monster, I'm something so ferocious. Like super califragilistic, expialidocious. Automatic, show you where it, Reggie let the lead fly. These girls here from India with edges out of bed stock. Mine so criminal, about to put it into you. I'ma bring the beef to your face, fuck subliminal. Homie, this is stick up. Give me this, give me that. Way them niggas ran from the gun, you think they ran track. Lola, let me finish this. I come through and killing shit, diminish shit. Eat rappers, breakfast, lunch, and dinner shit. I'm into this. The four or five, open up your wig fast. Sanitation rappers, all you niggas do is spit trash and get cash the model. Everything is mine. Mm. Let's go. Yeah. Hey. You already know what it is, baby. Reggie T, you know what I'm saying? On the freestyle right now and all that. You was listening to live with Lola, Lola in the building, DJ E class. You already know what it is. We got Young O D B in the building. You want to spit some balls, Young O? Consciousness is blessed. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> that's a jewel right there. That's a ball right there. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it is. You want to spit some more, Reggie? Let me think. I went out, I thought he was gonna go in after me. I was like, oh shit, come on, man. What is something? <laughs> he didn't look like, nigga, please. He said consciousness. What I was thinking about was. Let's, let me turn that down a little. Uh, now, now we got to me. I mean, I came out for a very important reason. Okay. Like the time my father put on the suit at some big award show. So each time we come out, we risk a lot. Because there's a lot of people over there that can stop us. Mm-hmm. So I figured if I'm only going to come out to rap, 
I could stay home and wrap my baby's pimpers. I watch my son every day and then still get shitted off in the DM. Right. So I'm like, I got to tell y'all something that I've been holding in. Okay. Okay. That's all. That's, 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 anytime I get a chance, I know I shouldn't do this every time. <laughs> but I think it's appropriate for, for what we need right now. That's the time. For real, okay. that's So, you know what, yeah, bring it be back. I got a little something more. If I had the opportunity to. More than enough, man. Yeah. <laughs> you want to bring, yeah, want it bring back? Want it back? Bring it back. All right. We'll bring a little it back. something more. Rest in peace to the legendary OGB. Shout out to young OGB in the building. Brooklyn, East Flatbush. Cash rules everything around me. Green, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Okay. Greedy MC, never share mine. Spare rhymes, keep my bar straighter than my hairline. Bars ain't curved, I ain't talking through a bare spine. Figure four verses on the mic. Rick Flair time, hotter than the summertime. Winter, keep the heater. Keep a sick flow like the waves in my season. Rhyming, then I beat you. Shots to sneak peekers. Never keep it put, I keep it moving like a sneaker. What's up? And it don't stop. Set of white hook, drop kick, getting on these locks, pick. Homie handle keys like he hustle when the locksmith. Call me Superman for the night, but I don't guard live. She feeling on my Jimmy in the car. That's a hard drive, far from a Christian. This ain't 50 Shades of Grey. Told me life was a game and had 50 ways to play. Everybody wanna. Mm. Mm, okay, okay. Now everybody wanna be greatest of all time But don't know why I own the first Cause the greatest is all mine You standing on the stage Watch the greatest of all shine Okay I said Now everybody wanna be greatest of all time But don't know why I own the first Cause the greatest is all mine You standing on the stage Watch the greatest of all shine this battle for supremacy, greatest of all rhymes. Greatest from the fakers and the under table dictators, dictators, shit makers, ones that don't get paper. Better keep my name out your mouth, let's get this here straight. Feel it in my gut like them chicken wings I just say. So now I don't wanna speak about these rappers, but if I mention names, I brush my teeth and wash my mouth after. Okay. Hey. Hey. Hey, <laughs> stop. Brooklyn. You already know what it is, you know what I'm saying? You was listening to Red GT and all that, you know what I mean? On the freestyle, on live, on with Lola. Flow Empire Radio, all right? Lola, talk to the people. That's what's up, y'all. This is FLO Empire Radio, you know what I mean? I say, <laughs> I say Flow <"Blow> Empire. <laughs> That's what I say. We got Red GT here, you know what I mean? And young OZB in the building, y'all. <laughs> turn the music down. Yeah, we're gonna turn the music down, and as we wrap it up, you know what I mean. Why don't you tell everybody, Reggie J, where we can reach you? Whew. Oh man, facebookcom slash Music twittercom slash Music youtubecom slash Music datpiffcom slash Music soundcloudcom slash Music Instagram is at Train City. S W O L E T R. I thought you were going to say Instagram at Reggie J. Actually, I got two Instagram. Okay. My face at Reggie J. Okay, so I'll put it like this. I have two Instagrams. So, yeah, one of them is Instagram at Reggie J. Music. But my main page is Swole Train City. S W O L E T R A I N C I T Y. Shit, Black Planet at Reggie J. Music. Black Page. That's Reggie J. Music. That's Christmas at Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> Especially on the SoundCloud. You definitely hit me on SoundCloud, Dad Piff, YouTube, hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I respond to the fans. That's Shout what it is. Everybody. That's what's up. And how can they reach you, Young OBB? Um, <laughs> the stars <laughs> in the eyes. Like, no, the stars in the eyes. Yo, for the top of the pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. Easy, easy. Two zero three seven five eight one eight nine five. 
Yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> DJ E class, like, how can they reach you? You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> yeah, my phone number is not. <laughs> <laughs> so I was then about to do that next, like, uh, okay, fine. <laughs> now, you already know on Instagram at DJ E class NYC. Follow me on Twitter at DJ E class NYC. At, you know what I'm saying? I ain't giving you on my Facebook because, you know, that's where my family and shit be on it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But for, for the most part, you already know, man. You know what I'm saying? Instagram, that's where I mostly be at. And my page is ratchet. I'm going to give them a warn y'all. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. And if anybody wants to reach me, just hit me up on my website, lolamonshu.com. All my info is there. Uh, if y'all want to be a part of my unsigned hype, just hit me up, lolamonshu.com or mrs.lolalola at gmail.com. So tune in next week on Live with Lola, y'all. Wednesday nights at 11.59 p.m. You know what I mean? It's a midnight show, but I'll give you that minute. <laughs> yeah, we're going next week. Yo, don't forget to tune in next week and have a special, special show. We're going to have... Um, Jay-Z and Solange going to have a rematch of the elevator. <laughs> What's this Colin McGregor and baby going on? Like, what's going on with the world? That's what's up, y'all. So tune in next week on Live with Lola, y'all. Thanks for coming in. Lola styling on them. She got that nose ring popping. She got the Russian hat on. <laughs> She's not playing, right? She's ready for the one. <laughs> Side chick day. Oh man, I will never forget that. I was seeing that all down my face. Like, y'all get catered to the side bitches now. I'm like, man. Like, so they ain't even oh got shit, don't drop them. Uh, <laughs> Women commit suicide when they selfie stick break. <laughs> 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 That's the shit that you know. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Know, I appreciate it. Peace, Lord. Oh. Peace. There's something stay break. That's a committed suicide. Yeah, that's crazy. That's, I love that shit. That's brother, man. That's I want to give some shit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> That's how I figured, like, well, I know I, mm-hmm. I figured, I was like, you know, I really didn't want to do that because, like, yo, it's a long track. Now, a lot of people listen to long yeah. tracks. But I was like, nah. Yo, this is yours? Um, that shit's on the table. Oh, I think yeah. one of the other guys who brought it to Charlie before I left there. Because if it is, I do need one. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, nah, people come back and Nah, nah, we're going to charge them. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yeah, I want them to know, yo, I knew I left here last night. Uh, that's why I keep being honest. Oh, yeah, don't forget your phone, boy. You know, oh, most definitely. That's the way they should be. A lot of people listen to the long tracks, right? You gotta think about this shit. I'm like, nah, good. Well, come back, don't worry. Thanks, Tony. I'll tip you $20. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Miss Cash, now, you know what? Yeah, right. 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 Y